Hey guys and welcome back to today's video. Today is the 100th day of my consistent everyday reading. So, we get a jubilee today. But anyway, I'm gonna continue my reading. So... What did he want? Asks Buck. Information, says our president. He said he was thinking of buying some stock and asked me about 900 questions. And every one of them hit some sore place in the business. I know he's on the paper. He's on the paper. You can't fool me can't fool me you see a man about half shabby with an eye like a gimlet smoking cut plug with <coughs> dandruff dandruff spear put together spear the dandruff spear put together if that ain't a reporter I never saw one I was afraid of this I don't mind detectives and post office ex inspectors I talk to them eight minutes and then sell them stock but them reporters take this starch out of my color boys I recommend that we declare a dividend and fade away the signs point that way. Me and Buck talk to Atterbury and get him to stop sweating and stand still. That fellow didn't look like a reporter to us. Reporters always pull out a pencil and table, tablet on you and tell you a story you've heard and strike you for the drinks but Atterbury was shaky and nervous all day the next day me and Buck comes down from the hotel about 10 30 on the way the we buys the papers and the first thing we see is a column on the front page about our little imposition it was a shame the way that reporter intimated that we were no blood relatives of the late George W. Childs. He tells all about the scheme as he says it in a rich, racy, racy, kind of a guy in style, style that scheme as he sees uh, of a guy in style that might amuse most anybody except a stockholder. Atterbury was right. It behoveth, behoveth, behoveth the gaily clad treasurer and the pearly painted president pearly painted president and the ragged vice president of the gold Cola, gold con the gold bond and investment company to go away real sudden and quick that their days might be longer upon the land me and buck hurries down to the office with funds with fines on the seats on the stairs and in the hall a crowd of people trying to squeeze into our office which is already jammed full in sight to the railing they've nearly all good gold on the stock and gold bonds into their hands me and all good gun gun gold con the stock and gold me and Buck judged they would be reading the papers too. We stopped and looked at our stockholders. 
so I'm surprised. It wasn't quite the kind of the gang we suppose had been investing. They all looked like poor, poor, poor people. There was, there was plenty of old women and lots of young girls that you'd say worked in the factories and mills. Some was old men that looked like war veterans and some was crept, crippled. And the good many was just kids, boot blackers, boot black, boot blacks and news newsboys and messengers some was work working men in overalls with their sleeves rolled up not not one of the gang looked like a stockholder in anything unless it was a peanut stand but they all had Golconda stock and looked as sick as you please. I saw a queer, kind of a pale look, come on Beck's face when he sized up the crowd. He stepped up to a sticky looking woman and says, Madame, do you own any of this stock? I put in a hundred dollars, says the woman, faint like it was all I had saved in a year. One of my children is dying at home now, and I haven't a cent in the house. I came to see if I could draw out some the circulars. Said you could draw it, it at any time. You could draw it at any time, but they now say now I will lose it all. There was a smart kind of, of a kid in the gang. I guess he was a newsboy. I got in 20 feet, mister, he says, looking hopeful at Buck's silk hat and clothes. They paid me two 250 a month on it say a man tells me they can do that and be on the square is that straight straight do you guess I can get out my 20 fee 20 fee <laughs> some of the old woman was crying the factory girls was plump, distracted. They'd lost all their savings and they'd be docked for the time they lost coming to see about it. There was one girl, a pretty one, in a red shawl, crying on the corner like her heart would dissolve. But goes over and asks her about it. It ain't so much losing the money, mister, says she, shaking all over. Though I've been two years saving it up. But Jackie won't marry me now. He'll take Rosa Seinfeld. I know, G.J. Jackie. She's got 400 in the savings bank. Hey, hey, hey. She signs out. <clears throat> Buck looks all around with the same funny look on his face. And then we see learning against the world, puffing at his pipe with his eyes shining at us, the newspaper say, the newspaper reporter. Buck and me walks over to him. You've a real interesting reader, writer, sorry. You're a real interesting writer, says Buck. How far do you mean to carry it? Anything more up your sleeve? 
Oh, I'm just waiting around, says the reporter, smoking away. In case any news turns up, it's up to your stockholders now. Some of them might complain, you know. Isn't that the patrol wagon now? <coughs> he says, listening to this to a sound outside. No, he goes on. That's dog. Rittle, Rittleford, Olds, Cadaver, Cadaver, couple from the Roosevelt. I off to know that gong, gong. Yes, I suppose we've written some interesting stuff at times. <clears throat> you wait, says Buck. I'm going to throw an item of news in your way. Buck reaches in his pocket and hands me a key. I knew what he meant before he spoke. Confounded old buccaneer. I knew what he meant. They don't make them any better than Buck. Pig, says he looking at me hard. And this graft a little out of our line? Do we want Jackie to marry Rosa's Stanfield? You've gotten my vote, says I. I'll have it here in 10 minutes. And I start for the safe deposit vaults. I come back with the money done up in a big bundle. And then Bugs and me takes the journalist reporter, reporter around to another door, and we let outside out, and we let ourselves into one of the office rooms. Now, my literary, literary friend says, "Bug, take a chair and keep still, and I will give you an interview." You see before you two grafters from grafts grafters will grafter country Arkansas me and pig have sold brass jewelry hair tonic some books marked cars cards patient medicines Connecticut Sirma rugs, Smyrna rugs, furniture, Polish, and albums in every town from Old Point Comfort to the Gar Golden Gate. We've grafted a dollar whenever we saw one that had a surplus surplus look to it but we never went after this simoleon in the toy of the of the sock under the loose brick in the corner of the kitchen hurts there is an old saying you may have heard fussily the sandy of Averni Fusili de Sandy Averni Which means it's an easy slide from the street fakers dry good box dry goods box to a desk in Wall Street. We've talked this that slide but we didn't know exactly what was at the bottom of it. Now you ought to be wise but you ain't. You get New York wiseness, which means that you judge a man by the outside of his clothes. That ain't right. You ought to look at the lining and seams. Seam, seams. And the button, buttonholes. While we are waiting for the patrol wagon, you might get out your little 
top pencil and take notes for another funny piece in the paper. All right, guys. We're going to continue and finish this story, the whole story tomorrow. So see you tomorrow. Bye. Cool.